What's up everybody, it's your boy Meme here. I've been using hydrocortisone cream um, on my face and it's working really well. Yeah. Um, check out my obsidian. So we've got this. Um, but I also worked on a lot of business 236 stuff. Um, we've been working on this like emotion. Ooh. Okay. Mm, okay. Uh, we've been working on this emotional intelligence unit, so I made this like Daniel Goleman note and I really expanded my emotional intelligence article and um, you know I wrote on like empathy and like relationship building and self-awareness there's this big reading we had to do here it is this big reading we had to do and it was like 12 minutes so it was like what makes a leader and it was like oh this CEO had to fire all these people but there are two CEOs and the person who was more empathetic when they fired people kept their best team members. And I was like, man, okay, when I, when I have to fire thousands of people, I'll be sure to keep that in mind. That'll be a good cope. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, check it out. Check out my animation. Uh, yeah, so that's what's been going on. Um, I'm having, uh, you may notice I'm using a light theme, and the reason why I'm using a light theme on Obsidian is because if I'm like, if I'm like writing something, um, can I show this? Uh, yeah, okay. So, like here, um, if you're right, if for me when I'm writing something, I find it a little difficult to focus if it's like dark theme. Um, and let me go into the settings. Yeah, like I don't know. Personally, I just this is like a little. It's not like harder to read, but it's I feel like I'm being less productive. I feel like I'm reading a message on Discord or something. Um, but if I'm at school and it's light theme and I'm in a library, I feel like I'm doing work. You know what I mean? Um, so. Yeah, uh, Obsidian's going really well, and, uh, yeah, the, um, the, the thing is cool. Um, oh, check this out. When I got home after I did my homework, I, uh, put black reflective paracord on my boots. If I get my flashlight and I put it right near my webcam, Check this out. Come on. Oh, there you go. You see that? I'm putting my flashlight right where my camera is. You see that? Whoa. 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 I swear that's super obvious in real life. It's like particularly obvious if you're like driving a car and you're, um, you're, in the driver's seat and the headlights sort of are very close to you, where your eyes are physically, like the angle is very similar. Um, like the angle that your headlights are hitting my shoes is the similar is similar to the angle that your eyes are hitting my shoelaces, right? Uh, and so it results in these shining really bright. And the reason why I felt like doing that is because, because I've had, um, I've had these shoelaces since I got the boots and I'm keeping them because I haven't actually Wore, I, I, worn, I wore these as a test to make sure they wouldn't like immediately um, undo themselves. Um, and the reason why is, and so I haven't, so the reason why I'm keeping this, the, the old shoelaces is because I'm not entirely sure what the um, longevity of these shoelaces are. So I'm gonna keep these for a while. Um, but if these are good with no issue, I'm, I'm gonna keep using them because you know, when I go to school at 7 a.m., it's dark, and when I leave school at 5.20 p.m., it's dark still. Like, I, I go, you know, I'm, you know, when I'm, no matter what time I'm commuting, it's dark outside, right? And I have to walk past a lot of cars where, um, in Seattle, it's a pretty common thing to, for streets to not have sidewalks, uh, particularly in, like, more suburban areas. So, um, 
it's kind of spooky because cars are just driving right past me and I'm walking down on the side of the road and I'm like a foot and a half away from this speeding car, you know, that would kill me if it hit me. Um, and it's fine. I've been walking on those roads for my whole life. Um, and you know, you just gotta, you just gotta look at the drivers as they're driving past it, like fine. But, um, you know, I'm wearing a black hoodie and I have a black backpack on and I have very dark blue jeans on and I have brown boots on and I'm kind of hard to see. Like, the highest visibility part of me is probably my AirPods and my water bottle, right? And that's not, that's not good. Um, so I'm, I might put uh, some sort of reflective tape strip on my water bottle. The thing that worries me about that is it's a little more difficult to wash your water bottle if you have tape on it. Um, it's kind of a different protocol. Stuff sort of builds up on the tape. It's kind of a whole process. So I might not do that. We'll see. I'll see what the best thing I can do is. Um, but for this, at least I've got some good reflectivity. Um, my only problem is that, you know, I put some reflective paracord on my New Balance 550s that I had. I still have them, I just don't wear them. Um, and that was cool, and it was for the same reason. It was because I was walking to work, you know, and sometimes I'd be walking home and it would be night and, you know, I, I want reflective shoelaces, right? Um, but the holes in the sneakers were too small to fit the 550 paracord, so it resulted in the shoes kind of looking weird and warped when they had the shoelaces in. Um, and that was just because the paracord is too thick. I should have gotten thinner paracord. Uh, to be fair, 550 paracord is like the standard. It's like what you, it's like when you're like, oh, I'm gonna buy some paracord, you buy 550 paracord. And then for the record, 550 is the strength that it can hold, that the cord can hold without breaking. Uh, but that's like consistent strength. So, um, someone can't like, so if you have a 550 pound brick that's falling from 550 paracord, right? And it's falling and then it stops cause the cord runs out, it's going to snap because for that, uh, for that time it was yanking on the cord when it, the cord ran out, um, that was more than 550 pounds. So it snapped, right? Um, but anyway, yeah, so this 550 paracord, it's a little too thick. Um, and it's still a little too thick for these. Um, luckily, it's not thick enough to where it kind of brings the hole with it, um, like how it did on my 550s, but you do kind of have to finagle it through the holes just a little bit. There are these hooks up here, and the hooks work, like they hook through the shoelaces, but I don't know how that'll work long term, and um, it's just not ideal. Uh, the thing that sucks is that because 550 paracord is the most common paracord, um, so, so I would want, I would want something like, um, 325 paracord because that's about, um, the, the diameter of these shoelaces, right? Um, but the thing is, is that because 550 paracord is the most popular type of paracord, that's the one where they have all the cool patterns and the glow in the dark tracers and the reflective tracers, which I like. Um, and, uh, there isn't really that much cool stuff for the rest of the, um, like paracord lineup generally. Um, so you look at like 90 paracord, you look at 325, you look at 475, and it's all like, you know, it's like red and blue and black and white and like camo and, you know, just like the standard patterns. And I'm sure that's great for, you know, 95% of people, but the only reason why I'm buying paracord really is for the reflective tracers. And I can buy reflective shoelaces on Amazon that are thinner than these, but then it's not paracord and I feel like I'm missing out on some possible functionality, you know? Um, like if I buy 250 feet of paracord, right, on Amazon for the same price, I could buy some reflective shoelaces. One of them, I can use it for a clothesline, you know? And, and the other one, it, it's exclusively shoelaces. So I feel like I'm, I'm kind of losing money if I don't spend money on two, like a whole bunch of paracord, you know, per paracord purchase. But, what am I talking about? Uh, yeah, I wish the shoelaces were a little thinner. However, you cannot get thinner paracord that's also reflective, unless you want 90 paracord. For some reason, there's I think it might be 90. I think there's a lot of 90 paracord that's actually reflective, reflective but refle but 90 paracord is actually less thick than this. So that would look weird. I feel like the proportions would be off there. And I don't know, maybe I'm, I don't want to overestimate my own strength, but, and I don't want to say I'm putting over 90 pounds of shoelaces, uh, um, 90 pounds of force on my shoelaces when I'm tying them. But you know, like it, it kind of, the strength sort of compounds the further down the, the loops go, right? So. I feel like it's it's getting pretty, there's like a lot of pressure being put on at least some of the cord and I'm spooked about having that low of a tolerance. But who knows, maybe it's like seven pounds of, of pressure on your shoelaces when you're tying them all together and I'm way off.
Um, what else? Uh, yeah, so I went to school at 7. Sadly, I forgot to bring coffee. I've been sort of getting off coffee. Um, if you see the, my thumbnail where I mentioned caffeine and REITs in the thumbnail, um, I sort of talk about that more. Um, I'm trying to get off coffee. The thing I'm doing is I should bring a can of coffee to school and I just have it during English. Um, and that's still like 200 milligrams of caffeine, but it's less than what I was having before. So, um, you know, that's a plan. I'm just weaning off of it. I have lots of aspirin in my backpack in case I ever get a caffeine withdrawal headache. Um, and, you know, I could have had the chance to today if I uh, didn't um, buy a couple monster energy drinks at school. Uh, I was like, man, I forgot to bring my coffee. I don't want to just not have caffeine, you know, I'll be a little less focused in English class and that sounds bothersome. Um, especially considering, you know, the essays due tomorrow and um, things get more and more important, you know, the closer you get to the essay. Or kind of, depending on how you look at it, maybe less and less important, but it gets more and more have to do with the essay, right? And I just want to download as much information into my brain about this essay as possible, right? And so I don't want to not have caffeine, so I bought a couple of like 300 milligram like m like monster mocha drinks um they it, it it was so much it, it like it tasted like coffee but it was like a coffee flavoring you know and it had like 30 ingredients the coffee i bring from home it's like kirkland signature canned black coffee it's 15 calories um and the only ingredient is coffee um but you know this these two monster energy drinks i drank were like like they had taurine and like these like these 30 different things in them and it was horrifying not to mention it was like 40 percent of your daily sugar content for one of them which is just scary um you know you hear about obesity in america and you know i really think it's because a lot of people are drinking their calories not to speak for everyone of course right but you know you look at like soda and it's really crazy. Like, there's a reason why they have such small serving sizes in Europe for soda. Like, there's a reason why. And, you know, I hate to be, like, that guy, you know, um, but I, I really feel like, you know, maybe we could look into implementing some sort of serving size uh, limit uh, nationally in the U.S. for soda, because... God, it's crazy. It's 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 really 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 insane. You you can go to McDonald's and get a soda and drink one hundred percent of your daily sugar allowance in one drink, like a like a thing that you that like a liquid like that that doesn't compute. That shouldn't be happening. You know that you shouldn't have that much stuff in a in a liquid that you drink. You know like if you're eating like if you're eating candy, I could imagine right, but a drink, like it's just so crazy. It's so crazy to me. I haven't drank soda for 20 something days. Let me check. Twenty four days, yeah. I wanted to say twenty four, but I didn't want to overshoot because it would suck if I was like, oh, I haven't drank soda in twenty six days and I checked my phone, it's like, oh it's twenty four. That's a little disappointing, right? Um God, I love recording videos when my parents aren't like talking because they're asleep right now. It's it's great. Uh, is there anything else? I hope um, I'm consistent with Obsidian. It's it seems like a really great tool, and it seems like the usefulness of it just goes up exponentially the more you use it. Like I'm already just like I happen to be running into things that I can link, and it's just incredible. It's an incredible feeling, and it only happens like once a day, but. It's crazy when it does happen. It happened today and it happened yesterday and it's just astonishing. Um, oh yeah, so back to my day, sorry. Um, yeah, so I had that drink, um, English one of what happened. Uh, we talked about Star Wars for a lot of it, um, but it was Star Wars, like, it was talking about Star Wars under the context of like a rent's definition of what would be considered a cultural object or like, like a worldly thing um, versus something that was made for entertainment. They're like, I think, 11 or 12 mainline Star Wars films. They're, the reason why we were talking about Star Wars is because there's a guy in class who's a really big Star Wars fan. Um, and my teacher is really into Star Trek. And so, you know, there's sort of a, like a, like a socially obligated sort of, sort of rivalry there. Like a, they have a jokey, he jokes about Star Wars a lot, right? Um, you know, and so we were talking about Star Wars. And I think there were like 11 or 12 mainline 
Star Wars movies. Um, and um, my teacher was arguing that um, I, I, it's been so long since I've seen the Star Wars movies. It, I was really like eight. I, I have no idea. But God, I was 10 years ago, I was eight. A decade ago, I was eight. That's so, that's, I'm so old, guys. I'm so old. Okay, anyway. Um, uh, what? So yeah, he was arguing that um, I think the fourth Star Wars movie, technically the first, if you're not including the prequels, but the fourth, technically, um, Star Wars movie, and I think Rogue One, I think? He was saying that only the fourth Star Wars movie and Rogue One were the only cultural objects in the Star Wars move were in the Star Wars franchise because the prequels a lot of them were made to sell toys and just like capitalize off Star Wars George and George Lucas was kind of being a crazy person uh, but like the fourth one I think it's called a new hope um, the, the theory was that a new hope was like completely detached from like it was like the first Star Wars it was like the first time anybody had ever talked about Star Wars right and it was like a purely unique cultural object, you know, and it was, you know, and of course at the time it was made for entertainment, but I feel like we discussed this in class. Over time, something could be made for entertainment and turn into, you know, a cultural object, right? And I can't think of many cultural objects that aren't at least a little entertaining. Like, I don't know, like a lot of Ro Mark Rothko paintings are probably cultural objects, but, you know, Everybody can derive a little bit of entertainment from them, even though they're just some squares, right? I could imagine, I just make my thumbnails, you know, because I need, I don't want to have my face be the thumbnail, right? And I just like, I just like making little images, right? But I derive some entertainment from them, even though I suppose long term they might be considered cultural objects. But God, I, I, it's gross to talk about my own stuff that way, because I feel like it's sort of, I heard Adam Ragusea use the word ostentatious, and so now all I say is the word ostentatious when I don't, I'm not even entirely sure what the definition is. Um, I wanted to say talking about it in the context of my own work seems ostentatious, but I actually don't know if that's correct usage. I just wanted to use a big word. Um, but yeah, that's cool. These boots are really heavy, you guys. I'm actually exaggerating a little bit because they have a, um, A pine, uh, shoehorn, shoehorn, shoe tree in them or something. Um, so here's some, here's a pro tip. If you want your shoes to last a really long time, buy these. They're like, it's like cedar or oak or something. Like there's a famous wood that does this. So you'll look it up like cedar, it'll show oak or if it's, or if it's, um, oak and you look up cedar, it'll show oak. Uh, I, I think it might be cedar. It's like these cedar shoe trees and they suck out the moisture. The wood sucks out the moisture from the foot and it uh, just makes the leather last longer. And especially if you have a really nice pair of boots like this. Um, whoops. Especially if you have a really nice pair of boots like this, it, you know, it, it's it's like getting a $1,000 iPhone and then getting like a $10 case. It, well, it's no, it's like getting a $1,000 iPhone and then getting like a $70 case, you know? Um, you know, there's no reason not to do that. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, why get a thousand dollar iPhone and then no case? Like, are you just gonna break your phone and then that's it? Like, is it Jover, right? You know, if you get if you get an iPhone, um, if you get an iPhone, get the case. That's my metaphor. Um, God, almost twenty minute video, and I just waffled. <laughs> what is blood on about? Oh God, I need to talk about. School, I need to talk about school. I'm sorry, guys. So after English class, I was looking around for places to do my business work. Um, and I found this little nook. Um, it's in this building called the Instruction Building, which is the same building where my English class takes place. Um, and it's actually really nice. It was just, it was full of lockers. And it's like, this is the only place with lockers in the college. It's like first come, first serve, like brand new home lock. You know, there's lockers on the wall. Um, but, you know, aside from that, there was like, Five, they look like voting booths, but they called them like zoom zones. Um, they're like five of those um, And there were just a couple circular tables and it was 
oh, there was two vending machines in there. One of them was for beverages. And it was one of those fancy beverage, beverage machines where it went like with the arm, right? Not the arm, but like the sort of, like the CNC machine, <laughs> the 3D printer <laughs> where it's like X and Y and it has like a thing that grabs it on like an X and Y, like sort of rails, you know what I'm talking about? Um, uh, and there was also a snack machine that was just like the springs that hooked onto things. Um, but then there was like a hot coffee vending machine. Um, it was so crazy. I, I, I didn't want to spend my money on it because I had already spent money on an energy drink. Um, but it was like, you could get like, like drinks you would get at a cafe from this vending machine that would provide you a cup. It was so weird. It was so strange. Um, anyway, you know, as it was approaching noon, more and more people had arrived in this little, very quiet area. Um, it was quieter than the library because the library has like library sounds, you know, the ones I'm talking, like the beeps and stuff that come from the library. And, um, you know, other places were quiet, like they didn't have people talking, but there was like some music playing. And the other ones, you know, they had the possibility of getting loud. I just didn't want to have to deal with that. And, you know, if I, did my work in the cafeteria, you know, I had the chance of like people who interacted with me walking up and talking to me and I like people, but I need to get my work done. So um, I found this little nook around midpoint in the day. There are like four people in there all together, uh, not including me. So like five people in there all together. Um, and the loudest sounds there were was like a mouse click. And that's, you know, as ideal as it gets. Uh, sometimes someone would come in and get something from the locker and that would of course make locker noise, but it wasn't that distracting and they would just be gone in a couple minutes um but yeah um hopefully these shoelaces hold up and if not i've got these um and yeah all right see you dude